welcome to Overreactability Live. I'm your host, Bremen Kesey, one of the sports editors here at the Daily Cardinal, and I plan to take you through this week's action of college football with 50% dumb jokes, 50% football talk, and 100% enthusiasm. Let's go to our quick reads. Number 13, LSU Tigers throttle number 2 Georgia Bulldogs to make statement in SEC, proving once again that Tigers are a more threatening animal than a Bulldog. I mean, look at him. He's a good boy. He can't kill anything. It's also a very bad sign when the Georgia team allows 275 yards of rushing to LSU with 59 of them being on one run by non-running quarterback Joe Burrow. And that's to say the least. I mean, look at his face when he's running. This is a man who is terrified. So a tough loss for UGA fans, but there's still a long way to go this season. I'm sure nobody's overreacting about the talent for this team. Sounds like everything's going great. Badgers struggled to do anything right in 38-13 to road loss to Michigan. Now, as a journalist, I'm going to try and remain objective and give a proper recap for this game, even considering my loyalties to the Wisconsin Badgers. What the f- But in all seriousness, Michigan's offense tired out a beat-up defense, and Wisconsin happens to have the Joe Flacco of college football as their quarterback, Alex Hornibrook. Is he elite? Is he bad? It's a weekly check-in with Hornibrook. This week he had a .7, not 7, a .7 QBR according to ESPN, which on a scale of 1 to 10 is definitively terrible. Of course, it could be worse for Badger fans. At least they're not Nebraska. Lowerke rallies Michigan State over number 8 Penn State 21 to 17. Just when you count Michigan State out, it seems like every single year they put it together and either destroy Michigan or Penn State's season. This year it was Penn State as the Spartans won on a last minute touchdown pass from quarterback Brian Lewerke whose last name literally translate in French to the work. I'm a Spanish major, don't, don't quote me on that. Either way, the Spartans always win ugly, and they'll try to ruin Michigan's season next week in a huge rivalry game for both schools, as they look to try and get on top of the Big Ten East race. Tennessee Volunteers notch a signature 30-24 to win as Auburn Tigers continue to freefall. Auburn has had a pretty rough year after setting some lofty expectations, and losing to Tennessee is a bad sign for any college football team. Turnovers killed the Tigers, and despite outgaining Tennessee, they lost at home. Never a good sign if you outgame the team and lose. It's probably a fire Gus year, but head coach Gus Malzahn has a $30 million buyout in his contract, and... At this point, if I was him, I would just lose on purpose so I get that 30 mil. That's the smart money move, man. Then I get to also leave the state of Alabama, which is a good plus. Hot take of the week. The Ohio State Buckeyes are one of the best teams in the country and are definitely the favorites in the Big Ten. Purdue is currently 3-3, three and three, but they're coming off a 46-7 win over Big Ten foe Illinois. Why do I mention all of this? Next week, the number three Buckeyes will travel to Purdue for a primetime matchup. In recent years, this game would have been a foregone conclusion. Ohio State would crush Purdue. But under new head coach Jeff Brom, Purdue has started to improve, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Receiver Rondale Moore is a big play waiting to happen, while the Buckeyes do have a great offense. Their defense has allowed big plays all season. In the words of Lee Corso, this game will be closer than the experts think, and my hot take is that Purdue is going to scare the Buckeyes and keep it a close game, maybe down to a field goal or touchdown in the last seconds. Well, that's our show. I hope it can only get better for here. Stay tuned for next week and visit dailycardinal.com for content that's not just about college football and probably much better than this show.